I started when I was 11 years old. I went to school in Edmonton there, and uh, that would have been in 60, well, 1961 till 68, and then I finished, or uh, just like. And when I first got there, I, I was learning the basics, a lot of the stuff from the students, and it took me a while to learn, like, I guess about three months to learn the basics, the ABCs, like how to fingerspell and stuff like that. But after about three months, I really started picking up the language very, very quickly. So that was great for me. Uh, and then 1968, like, like I said, I was there till 68. Came back home, and then um, And actually, it was interesting because when I came back to my home, my parents obviously were uh, speaking in Nuktitut, and I didn't understand them, and even just trying to figure out some of their lip reading was very difficult. Uh, so as a result of that, we actually, right at that time, started creating or started creating home signs or signs that were based on Nuktitut. I had the same experience when I was attending the Edmonton School for the Deaf, or because I just didn't understand the English. That was another process that I had to learn. It's another language. So simple concepts, simple nouns like chairs, stuff like that. But once I got used to it and was reading it more and working with it more, I acquired it quite quickly. Hearing impaired, uh, the deaf people were finally, finally, we've been waiting all those years and they said, we, we need some help and how can we get some help? And in 2006, we were so grateful when they finally got together and uh, what they can do, what, um, and a couple of great people we we know now, uh, one of our favorite people now, Dr. McDougall and Michelle McDougall, who, who started that project in 2006, and we will forever be grateful. And these children that will be coming up uh, in the future in Nunavut, if they are deaf, they should, they will forever be grateful to Dr. McDougal and Michelle. I know that I'm not never gonna forget that, and I will make sure that uh, they they be recognized for their work as well. It's important work, and we are truly appreciative that we can finally start getting help for uh, hearing impaired, at least hearing impaired, the deaf people. They don't even have a doorbell that flashes or a fire alarm that flashes up here. And we had a meeting with MTI, Nunavut Tungabit Incorporated in their building and uh, the fire alarm went on and there was no flashing light. And they saw to themselves that, yeah, she might die if, there's, if, she, if she can't hear the fire alarm if she's working in the office, she won't hear the alarm, but if there's something flashing, even these simple things we don't have yet. My wife, she's hearing impaired. She went to school for the deaf in Edmonton for seven years when she was 11, starting when she was 11. And she has all this knowledge that she has from teaching, learning sign language, American sign language. She always wants to teach what she learned in school uh, for the deaf children or even regular children so she can communicate with anyone. Uh, you see these deaf people in Nunavut, Whenever they finally get together, boy, they feel like talking with their hands. They need to talk with their hands, like we need to talk in our own inuit language as well. These people who talk sign language really miss talking in their language too. And they, when they get together, boy, they could even get noisy in the house, in their room, and how excited they are to finally talk. And that's what happened in 2006 when they got together for the very first time. My wife was so happy she finally able to express her feelings in sign language, not just alphabetical. Yeah. She finally uh, got what she been asking for years and years in the 2006 and hope, she hopes to meet all the deaf people in Nunavut and get all together and find out exactly how many they are and uh, what kind of help. They, they like to become teachers 
all of them I met. Uh, I met a lot of deaf people when I'm going for meetings, different meetings, and they have all said, I have all this knowledge, this schooling, I want to become a teacher. How do I become a sign language teacher? This, there's no such thing, and there's, uh, even myself, I don't know how to begin to uh, uh, have the hearing impaired or the deaf become teachers. I think you would have to go to an art college. She said uh, when she was about 11 or 12 years old, her younger sister, when she was uh, quite young, she got sick, she got ill, and uh, one of her eyes even turned white completely when she became ill. And uh, uh, she was able to hear and she was able to talk uh, when she was quite small. She was talking away quite a bit too much. Uh, when she got sick, uh, She lost her ability to talk. And she had many judges later on. They found out it was many judges, but now she lost her hearing. And, uh, when she lost her hearing, she lost her ability to talk and uh, yeah. communicate. So, yeah. So that happened when she was small. Yeah. So does she remember all this? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes, she remembers all that. <clears throat> and so uh, where did she go then to? Uh, was the doctor they went to look uh, after of the At the hospital, we took to the hospital. We went to the hospital. We went to the hospital. We the to the the time when the doctor came in when she was ill and uh, quite ill and uh, the doctor gave her injection and uh, after that she got much better after that injection. She recovered from the meningitis basically, yeah. yeah. Pigeonette, <laughs> Mm. Uh, when she was ill, uh, she recovered after the uh, injection and she was starting to feel better. And uh, uh, she always wanted to go outside. She was small and she had to pack her like they carry babies in a pack, uh, backpack or packing. And uh, um, if, if it wasn't her, taking her outside, she always wanted to go. It was her mother who took her outside. And she was still able to talk at that time after she was very old. And uh, they were living in igloos at the, at the time in the snow houses. And uh, when she went out, she recognized that it was Jaco, her uh, older brother's house. And she wanted to go to Jaco's igloo. And uh, he's passed away now too, but uh, uh, she was still able to talk uh, uh, at that time. So after that, then she lost her hearing, and then how did they communicate after that? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
Ano yung mahuli? Okay. Huwag okay. pakakatalaw sa mga. Agatin yeah. daw, huwag yeah. pakakatalaw sa mga. Okay. Ang um, maka ni Tinig, um, ito kasi kung nasa ito. Oh, okay. Yeah. When she lost her uh, ability to talk with her hearing, uh, she was able to uh, show some signs that she wanted water or tea. Awesome. And when they picked it up, what her signs were, then they started teaching her, uh, like, uh, you know, go uh, there. She used to say she wants to go out and pass and stuff. They started learning this as, they, as she lost her hearing. And all. She, they started learning from her first what she wanted, and they just come uh, for tea, you know, for water. So maybe tell her again, and then she may remember. It's very When she was small, she really enjoyed fishing when she, when she was really young. And uh, they kept an eye on her because some, some, some of the ice was thin and uh, uh, dangerous, but they kept an eye on her all. But she really enjoyed fishing and she still there. She remembers uh, she always used to uh, be her ball and chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when she was speaking before she got sick, she was speaking Inuktitut. Inuktitut ako talaga talo sa mga yung kawo na. Inuktitut. Pero kaya ulit sa mga kani malaw sa mga mga inuktitut ka katalaw sa mga dati mga nasi kalo na dito kalo na nito sa katalaw sa to kalo na sa katangitilo ta. Okay. She, uh, she learned the ability to speak uh, in, in Inuktitut, that's when she lost her hearing, when she yeah. was living at the same Yeah, time. but she wasn't speaking English, she was Inuktitut. No, Inuktitut. Yeah. But she, she couldn't hear English uh, before she lost her hearing. Oh, okay, but yeah. She, but she was uh, talking in Inuktitut, and that right. was her right. uh, first language. Actually. So when did she start school? Then? I'm <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a uh, Anglican preacher or minister who came here and they built the church and they built the house. After the house was built and after they settled down, he started teaching her Inuktitut and English as well. That was when she was learning. So how old was she been then? Katsinikia, uh, how old was she been then? She was five or six around there. Oh, okay, five or six. So he was teaching her. Yeah. So what happened after that? He went to school in Edmonton. Oh, okay. So would she come, how did they feel that she was sent away to school? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, she was more worried about her mother because her mother was uh, always worried about that she's hearing impaired. Yeah. When she went away, her, her mother was still alive. Okay. And uh, she was worried that maybe her mom might have missed her too much. Yeah. Uh, she, one thing that was 
she was glad she went to school, but she was at the same time worried. Very worried. Yeah. 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 She might go through all this hardship. Right. They had no idea what they were, she, what, what kind of school now. She is extremely grateful that finally, uh, she said, finally there's something for the, her sister who is having a fit, and uh, uh, she's extremely grateful that um, uh, you're here to maybe help out, uh, maybe do something in the future, but uh, uh, she's extremely grateful. And, yeah, and she knows too that uh, even uh, if they're hearing impaired, they're much wiser than hearing impaired people too sometimes. And she knows how difficult it is with someone who has disability trying to get help. Yeah. She, she grew up with that and she knows that now she's grateful that they were finally seeing someone coming Good. behind it. Because yeah. when she was younger and when they were younger, they wanted help but they didn't know how. And yeah. Finally, uh, it's time, it's about time that someone finally comes for the very yeah. young girl. Yeah. <coughs> Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>